and no more stinkymonkeys.com production. The Shield gets five stars out of five for the entire series. Is The Shield the greatest TV show in history? I'm not sure, but it's in my top three. Other than The Honeymooners and 24, I believe it's the only show that I ever saw every episode of in its entirety. I even missed a few Sopranos along the way. Many of you have probably never seen The Shield since it was buried on second level cable on the FX network. Without a doubt, FX is the best network on television. What with Rescue Me, Damages, Nip and Tuck, and now Sons of Anarchy. But now its greatest show, the one that put the network on the map, S.H.I.E.L.D. finally closes its curtain Tuesday night. They had difficulty wrapping the series up after one of its main characters was killed two years ago. But Tuesday night's episode was a fitting end to a heart-wrenching show. Like The Sopranos, the lead character was a man who had both an angel and a devil on his shoulders, and you were never quite sure which one would win out. Vic Mackey, played by the commission's Michael Chiklis, is a police lieutenant in one of the worst precincts in South Central LA, a fictional town called Farmington. He heads up the special strike force team that was supposed to get down and dirty with the drug dealers and gangbangers that run the streets. He was given an edict by his commanders to bring down the number of homicides and bring some law and order back to the area. He handpicked he handpicked his three other guys, including his old partner Shane, a redneck who was exceptionally loyal to Vic, many times to a fault. Lem, a huge man with a bigger heart who was too sensitive to be told everything that was going on with the team, and Ronnie, the brains of the outfit who could work the electronic side of their missions. Vic trusted these men implicitly and got them involved in almost all his schemes. In the beginning, along with major busts, he'd steal drugs from drug dealers and maybe sell them for profit later or use them to catch bigger fish, but his way of doing business was frowned upon by a new hierarchy, especially his new captain, Michael Acevedo. Acevedo was a political appointee who was trying to make his stripes off other cops' reputations and brought in an undercover cop from internal affairs to work with, with the strike team. Hoping to bring Mackey and his crew down, this new cop named Terry Crowley was supposed to report back any misdoings to Acevedo, but before he could get too close, Mackey figured out who he was and shot him and killed him during a drug sting and made it look like the drug dealer did it. This was just the ending to the very first episode and set the stage for the series and the different kind of cop drama it would eventually become. Of course, the killing of a fellow officer is not something a cop can easily forget, and since only Shane knew it, this was a secret they would both have to take to their graves. Even though a lot else happened in the intervening seven years, the killing of Terry was always a focal point in the series that, came, that it came back to, and as the secret started to leak out little by little. Into that the heist of the Armenian gang's drug money, called the Money Train, a parcel of cash that grew exponentially as the Armenian drug lords dug deeper into Los Angeles, and Vic and his boys were deep in hip deep in lies and secrets. Having three million dollars in small bills is difficult to hide, and even more difficult not to spend. As you know, when you tell a lie, you have to lie many times more to keep it alive, and a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Well, Lem turned out to be a weaker link as he grew more and more scared over the money train heist and the sadistic Armenians they stole it from. Facing prison time himself, Lem had to go on the run, but if he were caught, he'd face the worst possible hell, jail time as a former cop. Vic loved Lem almost as much as his own family and could never let anything bad happen to him. But Shane was like the jilted son who wanted to be the favorite. Plus, he was jealous and amazed by the way Vic always managed to outthink his opponents and wiggle out of sticky situations. Shane was always trying to one-up Vic, even though he wasn't smart enough. Shane's killing of Lem was the beginning of the end for the team, and set the series in motion for its last two seasons. Unfortunately, the show should have wrapped it up in one season, as it got bogged down in unnecessary side stories that only slowed the ine inevitable conclusion. The final season takes place in about two or three weeks' time, but it takes 12 episodes to tell it. In fact, the entire seven seasons of the show only cover three years in the lives of these cops. But while I'm telling you all the bad things about Vic and his team, I'm neglecting to mention all the good they do along the way, including having the number one arrest record and conviction record in town, and all the kind deeds they perform for people who they feel are worthy, including some hookers and other assorted criminals. But like Tony Soprano, Vic is a sociopath who thinks he truly loves his family and works desperately to protect them instead of just being with them, which is what they truly want. His actions, which he believes are for the betterment of his family, are actually pushing them farther away. And the more he tries to save him and his strike team, the 
farther he pushes them away. In another time, Vic would have been a great field general. But like too many field generals, he became a slave to his own ego. Tuesday night was a final episode for the ages as Shane and his family moved back into their apartment after being on the run for the attempted murder of Ronnie. Shane thinks he has one over on Vic, but Vic beats him to the punch and now Shane will be left holding the bag. There are many devastating things that happened in the history of this show, but this episode had one of the most disturbing scenes. It literally gave me nightmares that night. And the final scene of Vic is one I will carry with me for a long time. Unlike The Sopranos, this show ends with what can only be called finality, and I found it very sad. <coughs> Because despite all his misdoings, I rooted for Vic and his guys to somehow rise above their pasts and move on to better lives. They had so much core goodness that I was willing to brush aside all of the ugliness and pull for a happy ending of sorts. But Vic, in his struggle to calm too many fires, ends up burning one loved one for another and it turns out to be the worst choice of all. He tells Shane on the phone, when you're in prison, I'll visit your kids once a year and tell them everything that you and Mara did. Mara is Shane's wife. And Shane, beside himself, screams, You will never see my kids. Never. To which Vic replies, When you're in jail, I'll be sure to send you a postcard from Space Mountain. A devastating scene played out between two old best friends. The series ends up much like and with the same gravity as The Godfather 2, with Vic as Michael and Shane as Fredo. Few shows never jump the shark, even fewer never get to go out on top, but The Shield managed to hold you in its grasp for seven full years, and like Seinfeld, Sopranos, and Everybody Loves Raymond, I am sad to see it go, but happy that it remains strong in my memories. 10-4 from The Fredator.